my name is Emily Ramshaw. I'm a reporter with the Texas Tribune, and this is Studio SX. And I'm here with Matt Thompson. Yeah, I'm an editorial product manager at National Public Radio. Wonderful. Um, Matt, you know, you are really well regarded in the new media world right now for uh, some of your really sort of innovative theories on where the future of news is going. And one of those is this idea of journalism with context. Um, talk to me a little bit about what that model, what that idea means. Yeah, so generally, the idea is that we encounter news, typically most of us, as this stream of headlines. Just every moment. Every time you check up, check up, uh, you load up a news website, it's lots and lots of headlines being thrown at you. And the essential promise that we make is every time you come back to this page, there's going to be more information to throw at you. Turns out it's, this is totally debilitating. We just shut down. We get this flood of news and all of a sudden all we want to see is crime, traffic, and weather because that's all you can process at that speed. Um, the argument that I'm making is that in order to understand the news, in order to really follow stories like healthcare reform, immigration policy, what's going on in the Congo and all of that, uh, journalists need to be giving their audiences systemic information information frameworks that help them really make sense of the headlines. They need to be delivering context, basically. Uh, and I spent a year at the Reynolds Journalism Institute exploring some of the approaches that news organizations have taken to doing this. Um, and we're still very early on in figuring out how we deliver the context to people, how we get them to understand sort of the, the framework of stories so they can get the headlines. And tell me a little bit about who you've seen who's doing this well, uh, maybe who you've seen who's tried this out and it, and it hasn't worked so well. I mean, this is not um, an easy thing to jump into if you're in the traditional news media mindset of you know inverted pyramid stories, breaking news at the top, maybe a nut graph of context in the story. I mean, that's a totally different model from what you're talking about. Yeah, so one of the things that was really interesting to me, actually, I called my fellowship proposal for the Reynolds Journalism Institute, Wikipedia in the News. <laughs> Because I thought that one of the places, one of the sites that was really inspirational for how we could approach how information should be structured differently from the web than it is on in print or on the air, uh, is uh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia, we've discovered, works actually really incredibly well for breaking news. Like people in the heat of the moment, when something is, uh, when an episode is unfolding, a great breaking news event, a disaster, the uh, earthquake in Chile or whatnot. Uh, Wikipedia is often the first place that people look to sort of pull all the information together in the heat of the moment, to synthesize it. It's one place to go to figure out what's gone on, what's happening. But then we also know, we've discovered, that people turn to Wikipedia long after the, the headlines have faded, long after an issue is no longer the top of the news cycle, to get the sort of, okay, what went on, get the background get the full understanding of the story. Right, the backstory. So I think Wikipedia is really interesting to us. And uh, a lot of news organizations, I think probably most notably the Texas Tribune, your organization, and the New York Times, are two organizations that have really aggressively tried to experiment around this idea of creating topic pages mm -hmm. around subjects, around stories, um, providing a place that's kind of the first, the one-stop shop for a, a story, an unfolding story where people can go for information about it. Well, you know, it's interesting. We have been trying this out a lot at the Texas Tribune, this idea of topics pages where, you know, mini Wikipedias for Texas issues. Um, the challenges that are presented in these scenarios are, you know, traditional journalists want to break the story. They don't want to take the time and the effort to sort of, you know, put together the backstory, write the encyclopedia entry. Um, how does this work in, in a real newsroom? You know, do you have to shift the idea from reporters writing stories to reporters writing context? And, and how do newsrooms embrace this if they're sort of tied to a traditional breaking news culture? Yeah, I think uh, one of the ideas that I've been batting around in my head that I want to sell to uh, an executive editor that's interested in doing some pioneering is to huddle together in a room. Uh, and this is just, you know, I'm using the language of newspapers, but I think you could apply this to any newsroom. I want, take the executive editor, sit down in a room with your managing editor, your metro editor, your business editor, all the people, all the managing editors and assistant managing editors, perhaps, that you think really understand your area, your region, um, well. And ask them, what are the 10 most important stories for our community to understand? 
What are the 10 things, the 10 things that are unfolding at a high level, things right. that are going to be unfolding over the next few years? Right, you'll see breaking news on these stories consistently. Right. consistently over the next few years. What are the 10 most important ones for people to understand? And then figure out who's the subject matter expert for each of those in your newsroom? Who's the beat reporter that knows if one of the stories is transportation, right. how your city transportation system is being developed, a big highway project that's going to fundamentally change the nature of the city? Who's the beat reporter that can tell that story best? Give them a month. You know, they're doing their other job, but on the side, take a few hours every day, every week, and start constructing the most compelling synthesis of that story, of what's going on in that story that they possibly can. Think about it in multiple formats. If you publish a newspaper, what's the most compelling story that you can produce in print? It's just going to be the absolute best Sunday A1 feature. Right. What's the best encapsulation of that story that you can present online? Um, so do that for 10 stories. And each month, unveil one of these. And spend the rest of that month selling the heck out of that story. And at the, end of, at the end of the process, you've got a list. Top 10 stories you should be paying attention to right now. Start selling the heck out of your list and make your audience a promise that you're going to pursue each of those stories over time. I think that's one way to handle it. Breaking news out. And uh, is this curated? I mean, is the idea that these, this would be automated, you know, so that as stories were written, uh, you know, it would aggregate automatically? Or is the idea that you need to have, you know, a specialist, a real human being, who's making sure these, these entries you know, are, are complete and are valuable. So Wikipedia pages, topic pages, this is a totally new thing for the news industry. We don't know how it works at all. So I think that the process of developing this idea needs to look like any sort of product development process. When you're building any product in any company, you start with prototypes. You, start, you make 50 things out of basically duct tape and wire before you can build a factory, before you can extract, how, what, what parts of this can we automate and can we make more efficient? And you can extract that and make a factory out of it. So I think we're still at the prototyping phase. We need handcrafted examples of what really works, what really sells to an audience. And then we can start talking about how do we automate it? How do we scale this? What can we extract? Right, because I think you do see some shortfalls where you know uh, people will throw interns at it, or they'll throw you know automation at it. You know, trying to aggregate. I know some news organizations have these sites now that are just aggregated, and frankly, you look at them and there's not that much value there. So, right, right. So I, do I think, think it is I think one of the one of the big failures uh, right now in sort of selling this idea to our this idea to our our, our public is that. We, we tend to sell the idea of context and topic pages as more information. We tend to say, you're reading this story, okay, so you're reading this long story on reconcili budget reconciliation right. and healthcare reform, and then we're like, want more information? And you're like, hell no, I don't want more information, I want less information. I want you to distill this for me. I want you to help me understand my world, um, not throw more headlines at me. Um, we need to figure out a way that people are not, that we're not selling context as just you know, more stuff, but selling, here's, here's the basics, and if you want to explore deeper, we're going to give you room to explore deeper, too. Well, let's talk about selling it a little bit. You know, obviously we're in a time where mainstream news, newsrooms, newspapers, television stations uh, are struggling just to sort of keep their heads above water. You know, how do you create a culture shift, an emphasis on context at a time when they're just trying to figure out how to make the next dollar? Yeah. So I have two answers to that. One is if you look at demand, on the demand side of the equation. The interesting thing about Wikipedia, I like to, I like to just, I mean, this is totally anecdotal. This doesn't mean anything. Um, but it provokes thought. In 2006, Jimmy Wales said that 1,400 people all around the world contributed seven, Jimmy Wales is the head of the Wikimedia Foundation that produces Wikipedia. So that 1,400 people all around the world contributed 75% of the edits that composed Wikipedia. Just 1,400 people made up three quarters of Wikipedia. At the time, the New York Times newsroom was also about 1,400 people. All right? Uh, 1,400 volunteer editors, 1,400 highly paid professional journalists. Uh, Wikipedia's traffic in New York Times, <laughs> the, the New York Times traffic is right about here, Wikipedia's traffic is right about here. Imagine if those 1,400 journalists right. had spent the intervening years between then and now uh, building something, as opposed to just churning stuff. 
uh, what might that have looked like from an ROI perspective? What might that have looked like for a bottom line? What would the New York Times have today? I'm really interested in that side of the question. And secondly, uh, Google has been selling this idea to publishers as well. Google knows more about monetizing content on the web probably than any other organization uh, in existence right now. And what they've been telling publishers is that one of the most, uh, one of the most ba backwards uh, elements of current production systems is that you accrue all of this audience for a topic. You, you write this great story on healthcare reform, and you get all these people that advertisers want to speak to on that topic, and then you totally send them away. The next time, the next time you have a story on healthcare reform, it's a totally new story. You're not speaking to the same audience, and that ad that you sell them is as valuable as if you were speaking to a totally new audience again. Uh, so there's some real ROI, I think, things to focus on here, too. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Matt. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Emily.